Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today RGCSC. This is a tutorial video for Chemistry, Paper 4 Theory, Variant 4-1 for May June 2023 examinations. Question 1. Some symbol equations and word equations A to G are shown. Use the equations to answer the questions that follow. Each equation may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Let's go through the reactions from A to G. Equation A. This is an ionic equation from the chemical equation forming the precipitate of iron 3 hydroxide. So this represents precipitation. Equation B. During a neutralization reaction, base is added into acid to produce a neutral solution. And this here represents the ionic equation of neutralization. Equation C. So, we have here an alkane reacting with chlorine to form chloroalkane with hydrogen chloride. This is from your chapter Organic Compound under the reactions that alkane can go through, which is substitution. This reaction happens with the presence of UV light. Equation D, we have a long chain of carbon here and a smaller chain of carbon 8 and carbon 4. This is the breaking down of long alkene chain into smaller chain alkanes and alkene. This is a cracking process. Equation E. An alkene reacts with steam to form alcohol. Again, this is the chapter from organic compound. When you learn about alcohol, you should know that this process is called as hydration. Next, equation F. Chlorine reacts with aqueous potassium iodide forming iodine and aqueous potassium chloride. This is when a more reactive halogen displaces a less reactive halide. We can call this a displacement reaction. Next off, equation G. We've got here the symbol equation of glucose, which then converts into ethanol and carbon dioxide. This is the manufacturing of ethanol by fermentation. Equation F. Ethanoic acid is a carboxylic acid reacting with ethanol and alcohol to form an ester plus water. This is an esterification process, which you will also see in your chapter of organic compound. Equation I, calcium carbonate becoming calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. You will come across this reaction in the blast furnace during the extraction of hematite and this is known as decomposition. And the last one should be easy. You've got carbon dioxide and water converting into glucose and oxygen. This is photosynthesis. The next step should be simple. Just fill in the blanks with the letter A to J that represents each of these reactions. Make sure you're only using the letters A to J and not writing the equation in the answer space. Question 2A. The symbols of the elements in period 2 of the periodic table are shown. Use the symbols of the elements in period 2 to answer the questions that follow. Each symbol may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Okay, before we answer the questions, this is the screenshot of period 2. So this way, you can see the proton number and the mass number for each element from period 2. Give the symbol of the element that, part 1, makes up approximately 78% of clean dry air. This is an important diagram that you should remember. The approximate composition of clean dry air is 21% of oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and the remaining consists of argon and carbon dioxide. So the element that makes up approximately 78% of clean dry air is nitrogen. So when you answer, make sure that you're only giving the symbols and you do not have to write the name of the element. Part 2 contains atoms with only three electrons in the outer shell. This means that it is in group 3, which will be boron. Part 3 contain atoms with only 9 protons. As you can see here, containing only 9 protons would be fluorine. Next, part 4 exists as graphite. Graphite is a crystalline form of the element carbon, so the symbol here would be carbon. Part 5 is an alkali metal. Alkali metal is the elements in group 1, so that would be lithium. And lastly, only has an oxidation number of 0, meaning that this is a stable element which can only exist from group 8. So that would be neon. Question B. Boron has two isotopes. Part 1. State the meaning of the term isotopes. 
Isotopes can be defined as different atoms of the same element with the same proton number, giving you the first mark. But they consist of different neutrons number, giving you your second mark. The highlighted keywords have to be mentioned in your answer to give you a complete two marks. Part 2, Table 2.1 shows the relative masses and the percentage abundance of the two isotopes of boron. This column shows you the relative mass and here is the percentage abundance of the isotope. The total percentage of abundance here is 100%. Calculate the relative atomic mass of boron to one decimal place. Relative atomic mass calculations are very methodical. We are going to multiply each mass by its percentage, dividing it by 100. This will give you one mark. The question asks your answer to one decimal place. So the calculation will give you a relative atomic mass of 10.8 for the second mark. Relative atomic mass do not have any units, so you can just leave your answer as 10.8. Question 3. This question is about ionic and covalent compounds. Ionic compounds formed by metals and non-metals, and covalent compounds are from non-metal elements. Question A, part 1. Sodium reacts with oxygen to form ionic compound of sodium oxide. Even though the question do not ask you for the chemical equation, Whenever you are given with a reaction, I would always suggest you to show the chemical equation. Next, the electron configurations of an atom of sodium and atom of oxygen are shown in figure 3.1. The shells of a sodium atom is filled in with 11 electrons, so the electron configuration is 2, 8, 1. And an oxygen atom has 8 electrons, therefore its electron configuration is 2, 6. Ions are formed by the transfer of electrons from sodium atom to oxygen atoms. Complete the dot and cross diagrams in figure 3.2 to show the electronic configuration of one sodium ion and one oxide ion. Show the charges on the ions. So a sodium ion would lose one electron in order to become stable and an oxygen atom would require another two electrons to become stable. Part 2. Write the formula of sodium oxide. Sodium has a charge of positive 1 and oxygen negative 2. To form a compound, their charges would cross to the other side, giving you Na2O1, which you can just write as Na2O. Question B. Carbon dioxide CO2 is a covalent compound. Complete the dot and cross diagram in figure 3.3 to show the electronic configuration in a molecule of carbon dioxide. Show outer shells electrons only. Before drawing your dot and cross diagram, identify the elements that present and write down their electron configuration. Carbon requires another 4 electrons to become stable and oxygen requires another 2 electrons to become stable. Even though carbon has 4 electrons and you could draw them like this, since oxygen requires 2 electrons from carbon, we are going to place the electrons like this to show that carbon shares 2 electrons with oxygen. And next we have oxygen with 6 electrons on its outer shell. And even though we can display them like this, you will see that carbon requires 4 more electrons to become stable. So we are going to share 2 electrons each from each oxygen atom. This shows that oxygen has shared 4 electrons for carbon to become stable. Now, if you look at each atom individually, you will see that they have a complete 8 electrons on their outer shell. Part C. The melting points of sodium oxide and carbon dioxide are shown in Table 3.1. Part 1. Explain, in terms of bonding, why sodium oxide has a high melting point. When explaining in terms of bonding, you can start by stating the type of ions the compound consists. Sodium oxide has positive ions and negative ions. And then, explain about the type of bonds of forces that exist within the compound. Sodium oxide has strong ionic bonds, which you could also describe as electrostatic force of attraction. Since the question only provides you with two marks, these two points are sufficient. Likewise, if they were to ask you about carbon dioxide having a low melting point, you can say that it consists of negative ions and that it has weak intermolecular force. Part 2. Carbon dioxide has a low melting point. 
state the general term for the weak forces that cause carbon dioxide to have a low melting point. So as I mentioned before, for high melting point, it has strong ionic bonds and for low melting point, the compound consists of weak intermolecular forces. Question 4. Oxygen is produced by the decomposition of aqueous hydrogen peroxide. Again, as I mentioned, even though the question don't ask you, they mentioned here it's a decomposition reaction of hydrogen peroxide. So you can write down the chemical equation. The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide will give you water and oxygen. Question E. State the meaning of the term catalyst. Catalyst is one of the factors that changes the rate of reaction. When catalyst is added into a chemical reaction, it causes the reaction to speed up and happen at a faster rate. Mentioning this will only give you one mark. For the second mark, you have to mention that the amount of catalyst will remain unchanged at the end of the reaction. Question B. A student adds powdered manganese oxide to aqueous hydrogen peroxide in a conical flask shown in figure 4.1. The mass of the conical flask and its contents is measured at regular time intervals. The mass decreases as time increases. This is your hydrogen peroxide which will decompose to form water and oxygen. And the manganese oxide would speed up this reaction. Part 1. State why the mass of the conical flask and its contents decreases as time increases. During the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, oxygen is the product and it will eventually leave the conical flask, thus the mass of the hydrogen peroxide itself will decrease. Part 2. The rate of reaction is highest at the start of the reaction. The rate decreases and eventually becomes zero. Explain why the rate of reaction is highest at the start of the reaction. At the start of the reaction, the rate of reaction is at its highest because the mass is at the highest, meaning that the concentration of hydrogen peroxide is at its highest. Therefore, the collision frequency is also at the greatest, resulting in the highest rate of reaction. As it decomposes, the concentration gets lesser and the collision slows down. That's why the rate decreases and eventually becomes zero. Since the question only provides you with one mark, you can either write the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide is the highest or the frequency of collision is at its highest rate. Part 3. Explain why the rate of reaction eventually becomes zero. As you can see here in the graph sketched, the rate of reaction eventually becomes zero because the mass of hydrogen peroxide reaches zero when all the hydrogen peroxide is being used up or has fully converted into water and oxygen. So you can say all the hydrogen peroxide has reacted. Question C. The experiment is repeated at an increased temperature. All the other conditions stay the same. Explain, in terms of collision theory, why the rate of reaction is higher at an increased temperature. When asked to explain in terms of collision theory, you should first talk about energy. Increasing the temperature means that the particles will have more kinetic energy. Giving you your first mark. Then, you should talk about the movement of the particles. So, the particles move faster. Next, talk about how often the particles collide. So, the particles here will collide more frequently. And finally, talk about activation energy. This means that more particles have energy above the activation energy. And this gives you your third mark. Remember, you can also be asked about if the temperature decreases. Essentially, follow the same flow, but your answer will be opposite of what is written. Question D. The equation for the decomposition of aqueous hydrogen peroxide is shown. 50 cm cube of 0.2 mol dm cube solution of hydrogen peroxide is used. Calculate the mass of oxygen that forms. Use the following steps. The first step is to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide used. Whenever you are asked to calculate something, first always identify the values given. Since you're looking for moles for hydrogen peroxide, we are given with the volume 50 cm cube and the concentration 0.2 mol per dm cube. 
There are only two formulas related to mole. Mole equals the mass of a molar mass and mole equals to volume times concentration. It's pretty simple here which one we should use. Since we are given with volume and concentration, we will use this formula. Let's substitute the values into your formula. The volume is given in centimeter cube and you always have to convert it in dm cube by dividing it to 1000. So you have 0.05 dm cube multiplied by its concentration of 0.2 moles per dm cube and this will give you 0.01 mole. An exam tip for you is that to always show your workings in calculations as it is easier to check for errors and you may pick up credit if you get the final answer wrong. Moving on to the second step, determine the number of moles of oxygen produced. Using the balance symbol equation, we can see that 2 moles of hydrogen peroxide will react with 1 mole of oxygen. From the first step here, we have obtained 0.01 moles of hydrogen peroxide. So we can easily calculate the number of moles of oxygen produced by the ratio logic, which is 0.005 mole. And the final step is to calculate the mass of oxygen produced. We have now obtained the mole of oxygen and we are asked to find the mass of oxygen. The relationship linking mole and mass also requires the molar mass. And the molar mass for oxygen is 32. So to get the mass, it will be the mole divided by its molar mass, which gives you a mass of 0.16 gram. Question E. State the effect on the mass of oxygen produced if the mass of powdered manganese oxide catalase is increased. Remember that a catalase will only speed up the reaction. It will not change the amount of product being produced. Therefore, there will be no effect on the mass of oxygen. Question F. Oxygen can also be produced by the decomposition of mercury oxide. The only products in this decomposition are mercury and oxygen. Write a simple equation for this decomposition. This should be pretty simple because you are already given the equation for mercury oxide which is HgO and they gave you the product as well which are mercury and oxygen. This will give you one mark. Whenever you are writing an equation, always check to see whether or not the equation is balanced. You have two oxygens here so you have to put two over here to balance two oxygen from mercury oxide. This leads into two mercury so we will put a two here. Now the equation is balanced.